Right, so I'm going to do question one. Um, I should have got question two done here as well. And then I might need to stop because my laptop's going to die. Right, so this is the relationship between the acceleration of a body and the force applied to it. Uh, the student recorded the following data. Describe the steps involved in measuring the acceleration of the body. Okay, so... Sorry, I'm just going to label this and then label this. So how do we do acceleration? We use v squared equals u squared plus 2as, but rearranged. So v squared minus u squared over 2s. u is the initial velocity, which is the length of card divided by the gate one time. V is the length of card divided by the gate two time. And then S is the distance between the gates. And it's 12 marks, literally it's three, 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 oh, <laughs> three. Okay, uh, use the recorded data to plot a graph to show the relationship between the acceleration of a body and the force applied to it. Now, this is F is proportional to A, uh, so the formula that governs that is F equals MA. Isolate M, so we divide by A, divide by A. So M equals F, oh crap, over A. That means this goes on the Y axis and this goes on the X axis. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we'll do a graph. What did I say? F. In newtons and a in meters per second squared okay so point fives maybe have I space for that so 0 0.05 0 0.1 0 0.15 0 0.2 0 0.25 0 0.3, 0 0.35, 0 0.4, 0 0.45, 0 0.5, 0 0.55, and 0 0.6. Uh, oh, the force is nice. It just goes up in point twos. So 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1, Maybe I'll just spread. Oh, it's only 1.2. Hang on now. 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 10. Yeah, I think I can spread it out. Always spread it out as much as you can. So if I can, I will. 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1. That's 1.2, and I just have to extend slightly to get 1.4. Okay, uh, so do my dots. Uh, so 0.2 with 0 0.08. So that's going to be about there. Uh, 0.4 with 0.18. So about there. 0.6 with 0.2. Two eight. So that's about there. Um, point three one with point eight. So there's point eight, and there's three one. Something like that. Uh, four five with one. 
So four, five, and one is there. Uh, 1.2 and 5, 1. So 5, 1 and 1.2, kind of like there. And then 1.4 and 0.6, which is there. So we'll get our line. I'm going to hit the origin here and I'm going to try and get best fish. Maybe that. So I can use the origin and that point on the line. So whatever that point is, I can use that. What was that point? Second last one is 0 0.51, 1 1.2. 0 0.51 and 1.2. And then down here we have 0, 0. Uh, the slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 which is x1, y1, x2, y2. So it's 1.2 minus 0 over 0 0.51 minus 0, which is 1.2 divided by 0 0.51 is 2.35. Okay. So using the recorded data, plot a graph to show the relationship between acceleration of a body and the force applied. What does the graph tell us about the relationship? So the graph tells us that force is proportional to acceleration. And the reason we know that is because it's a straight line through the origin. Uh, just in terms of the marks for the graph. Um, so... There's marks for your axis labels, both of them, uh, marks for choosing an appropriate scale, marks for plotting your points and marks for your best fit line. That's so how they split up the marks and then obviously marks for what I've written there. I will put the scheme in so you can see exactly how many marks. Um, oh, I kind of skipped on. So the graph is part two, which is I'm calling it part two. Part three, I've already done. Use your graph to find the mass. So I drew the graph in such a way that the slope was the mass. So the slope put the y-axis over the x-axis. The y-axis is the force. The x-axis is the acceleration. So that gives me the mass. So that 2.35 is 2.35 kilograms, which is my mass. So that's part three. And the last part is, on a trial run of this experiment, a student found that the graph did not go through the origin. Suggest a reason. Sorry, I'm just looking at the scheme here. Um, suggest a reason for this and describe how the apparatus should be adjusted so that the graph will go through the origin. Uh, so I think most of you had a pretty good attempt at this. Um, what you want to be talking about here is, uh, so the apparatus, okay, I'll give you a really nice way of answering it. The apparatus should compensate for friction and gravity. So ensure the track is level so gravity doesn't affect acceleration. And ensure the holes are clear. So air blower is working to reduce friction. 
Uh, yeah, so I gave you the marks there. It was 3333. Three, three, three. The graph was three for the labeled axes. So three for the labeled axes. Three for the six points plotted correctly. Three for the straight line. Three for a good distribution, which is choosing an appropriate scale. And then three for this thing over here, saying that force is proportional. Your calculation of um, mass is three for the slope, three for the answer. And then this last part was friction. Yeah, so I think I was quite lenient on that, but you did need both. So you needed a comment on gravity and a comment on friction. Okay, I'm going to do this if my iPad allows it, and then I'm going to have to call it. So an airplane starts from rest on a runway and reaches a velocity of 290 kilometers per hour in 33 seconds. Calculate the acceleration um, of the plane in terms of G, the acceleration due to gravity. So it feels like a U vast. I can't actually remember. So the initial velocity is zero. The final velocity is 290 kilometers per hour. Uh, the acceleration is what we're looking for. S we don't know and T is 33. Um, so V equals U plus AT. Now I cannot use that V like that in kilometers per hour. So we do 290 kilometers in one hour. Convert kilometers into meters, uh, you multiply by a thousand. So that is two, nine, zero, zero. Oh no, sorry, I'm gonna have to go underneath. So that is two, nine, zero, 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 zero meters. And then to convert hours into seconds, it's by 60, by 60. So that is 3,600 seconds. And then just divide the numbers. So I'm getting 80 points. Yeah, 290,000 divided by 60 multiplied by 60. 80.5 recurring meters per second is what I'm getting. Um, okay, so now I can put that in. So this is 80.5 recurring equals zero plus A times 33. So 80.5 recurring equals 33A. And then I can divide by 33 on both sides. So I get A equals 2.44. Um, but they want that in terms of G. So G is 9.81 meters per second squared. So can I divide them? 9.81 divided by 8 is... It's a little bit over four. So that means the acceleration I'm getting is one quarter of G meters per second squared. Yeah, because just a little over four fits in. Uh, so does that work? 9.81 divided by 4 is... Yeah, 2.45. It's close enough. Um, how do the answer work? Sorry. Oh, and it's right. Anyway, so 2 for the 80.5 recurring. 2 for the formula. 2 for getting this. And then 1 if you made the last bit. Okay, so hopefully that'll do you for now and I'll do the last two questions um, after my iPad charges.